guys, welcome back to another video. It's Emma. I hope you've all had a good week and you've been out exploring, using all these techniques we've been learning over the past few weeks and taking some really cool photographs. So this week we're going to move on from sort of landscapes and nature photography, which we've kind of been focusing on a little bit, I think, and we're going to be doing portraits. I'm going to teach you how to take really cool, amazing, creative portraits using just our phones. So stay tuned and we'll get right into it. So guys and gals, we're going to start as we always do, which is with super clean lenses. Really, 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 really clean. So even if I just did that, that would have a big smudge over my lens. You want to make sure when you're lifting it to light that you can't see anything obstructing the lens's view. So it's so important, I mean all the time, but when we're doing portraits we really want to capture the detail of the face, you know, the silhouette of the body, details in the hair, but most importantly the eyes. Because when we're doing a portrait, that's what we're focusing on. It's the window to the soul, it's where your focus should always be, it draws your attention into the person's face. If you're talking to someone, you know, the majority of the time, your focus is always going to be on the eyes. It's how we read body language and emotion. Eyes are so telling. So when we're taking a portrait, that's usually where we want our focus to be. So we're going to be grabbing our phones with super clean lenses and we're going to be trying to focus on the eyes. Now there's loads of different kinds of portraits, but say let's just start with headshots. Now I'm a headshot photographer. I'll take pictures of actors or musicians, models, businessmen and women. I do all kinds of different headshots. They're all a little bit different. You can be a bit more creative with some, some are a little more straight edged, but they're all a headshot, which means that we should be capturing roughly from the shoulders across here to the top of the head. And we want the eyes to be in the focus and in the top third of our rule of thirds. So maybe we'll just recap that because that was a few videos ago. So if you've got your grid lines up on your phone, I'll pop up a picture, it's easier than trying to show you what we're doing. So we've got our grid lines up and if you remember, the focus points that we want in our rule of thirds are the four corners of the middle square. So when you're taking a portrait, the top two are where we want the eyes to be. So that would be the line that separates the top and the second, uh, you know, the first and second and third. So personally, I tend to go to the top left one, but you can do the top right corner as well. And that's just where you would want your subject's eyes to be. So say for instance, I would say it was a little out of frame at the moment, but if I was a little higher up like this and about there would be where you'd want your focus to be when you're taking a portrait. I'm going to pop up lots of pictures while I'm talking just to give you an example of the kind of different pictures I take and the different kind of headshots and portraits you can do. But if you're just doing a classic portrait, it should be kind of across the shoulders. You can be straight on or different sides, you know, you can, you can change the positioning and the pose of your model or whoever you're using to take pictures of and you want that eyes in the top two thirds and we're going to be tapping our phones so if you remember we tap where we want our focus to be and you're going to do that on either eye and that will make sure that the eyes are really in focus really sh sharp and we'll get lots of lovely detail and that will draw people's eyes to where we want them to be and it kind of gives you a really beautiful expressive portrait so make sure that you're focusing, they're in the top third, either corner, you're on the eyes and for a classic portrait it would go across the shoulders and to the head. So play around with that technique, get some really cool headshots. So what we're not going to do is take selfies, either get someone else to take a photo for you or I'll show you a different setup for self-portraits. You want to make sure you've got no harsh shadows on your face, so you've got a nice even light source. And we're going to be using the focus lock. So if you hold down the focus button on the phone, you'll get this symbol. 
and we're going to be using our grid lines and natural light to make sure we're getting the right focus points on the eyes. You can either do close-ups, a mid shot or a long shot like these examples and you want to make sure you've got a nice background, nothing too distracting. So coming up you can see the brick background's quite distracting, you can see the edge of it whereas the whiter background even with the texture looks um, a lot better. Or you can just use a plain wall in your house and edit the photo. So if you want to do a self-portrait you can lean your phone up against something like a plant pot in your house. Maybe you've got one of these tripods. If you don't, just use a chair or a coffee table or anything you like and set up a timer on your phone. Two seconds, three seconds, ten. And that way you can press the timer, get in position and take a self-portrait. So that would be your sort of basic headshot. And as you know, once we've learnt all of our rules of photography, we like to break them a little bit or at least change them up so they're a bit more creative and fun. So I'll show you sort of the first portrait hack that I, I like to use. Usually if I've got sort of models or musicians or people where you can be a bit more creative or even if I've just got my friends around and we just want to take some pictures just for fun, it'll always end up as a profile picture because there's such, such cool effects. So number one, the paper clip. That's right. So what we're going to do, it could be a paper clip, it could be anything sort of small or colour that you have in your house. And what you do is hold it in front of your lens. So let me see. That's my lens. And we're going to use it to shoot through. And it'll give us a really cool shape, a bit of colour. It's almost like a, a filter. You can use the curves in it to frame a person when you're taking photographs. Let me get that lined up properly. So if I hold it like that, it would give a sort of blue loop to a portrait subject. I'll pop up pictures as I'm talking so that you can see proper examples rather than just me and you. But yeah, if you hold that in front, and you can move it around, you can hold it a little farther away. If you hold it really close, I tend to find you get a really nice bit of bokeh, which just means that nice blurred effect. And yeah, the humble paper clip. So you can get clip, like multicolored packets, I think, but these are just the blue ones that I had in my office. And they're just really fun to hold in front of the lens and then use it to frame your subject and also just to give that sort of blue filtered effect and it looks really, really cool. So when we're taking portraits, we want to make sure that we have a good source of light so that we can see our subject, so that we can get some nice light reflecting out of the eyes and that we can see them. Now there's a few different ways you can do this. Obviously we've got natural light and I'll use that most of the time when I'm taking a picture. Uh, if you're using natural light and it's a really bright, harsh, sort of sunny day, it's not particularly flattering. Harsh sunlight, if you're standing in it, gives you shadows across your face. It can, you know, make the eyes look a bit sunken because your brow bones and your cheekbones are going to be higher out and they'll look a bit shadowy or you can get weird shadows from hair and things like that. It's not particularly flattering either. It's, it's really bright, really white, and it brings out every single little detail in your face. And most of us don't want that when we're having our pictures taken. You want the light to be soft and flattering and diffused. So if it's a cloudier day, that's naturally gonna diffuse the light. It means that the particles of light are spread out. They're dispersed throughout a wider space and it softens them. So it's not just like sunlight straight to skin, there's a bit of a barrier in between and that just makes it nice and soft and that's usually a lot more flattering and you don't get that sort of harsh contrast in between. So if you are outside taking portraits and it is a bright sunny day, just try to find areas of shade. So I would put my subjects, you know, under a tree or if you've got walls or fences or anything you can sort of block the sunlight uh, with 
that's going to be really handy. Another way to deal with it is just to backlight your subject. So I think we talked about that a few videos ago. So you're just going to backlight them, they might be slightly silhouetted and you can just change your exposure and ISO and things like that to make sure that your subjects are lit, that we can see their face, but the sun should be behind them so they're blocking that harsh light and you'll just get the nice soft light from in front. Um, it's kind of hard, I don't really like to take pictures in harsh sunlight if I can help it. I would rather wait until later in the day when it's when it's left or if you can find an area of shade. So next up if you're taking a portrait and it's really dark you can use the torch on your phone. Now it's kind of a harsh light it's not as bad as the sun or the flash on your phone but what I like to do is use a white plastic bag and if you hold that in front of the torch on the phone, it diffuses the light through it and it becomes really soft and it also covers a large area. So instead of just having like torch light right here, it kind of glows. And we want things a bit more glowy rather than just in your face because no one's going to look nice in that kind of light. So this will work best if you're holding the bag over a tablet or a phone that you're not using to take the photograph. So like that man is with his camera. If you don't have a phone or tablet, you can put a bag over another light source like a lamp. And this is the difference between a picture taken with a harsh flash and then when you use the white bag as a soft box. Also works as a color filter, which is really, really cool. So if you've got you know a friend or a family member that you're taking a subject with, you can use their phone and their torch to create a light source whilst you take the picture on your phone. So another technique I like to use when I'm doing portraits is using a reflector. I have a reflector behind me here. Uh, that would be the one that I use professionally when I'm using you know, my big DSLR camera. But if you're out and about or you don't have equipment like that, which you wouldn't need unless you're a professional photographer, you can use a piece of paper, that's right. So we're gonna use this white paper to reflect light. That's what a reflector does. So you can use different colors and things to reflect different kinds of light. If you're using white light, that's usually, or white paper I should say, that's not gonna change the color of the light that we're using. So I don't know if you can see the way that that changes light when it's here. And when it's not, can you see that shimmering there? Because it's reflecting the sunlight. So I could use that to reflect light at the back of my head. Can you see that difference in my hair? Or the side? So if you've got some light coming through, but it's uh, like one direction, it's not the band. So the light's coming through in one direction, say through your window, and you're taking some portraits by it you'll often find that one half of the face is lit really well, but then the other half can tend to be a lot more shadowy. So say if I was more sideways like this, that side of my face isn't gonna have as much light, but if I bring that in, and you can play around with the angle, it'll just light your subject a little bit better. Now we've got pretty good light today. It's nice and diffused and I'm facing a window but if you're getting any harsh shadows on one side of the face, just grab a piece of paper and you can either get your subject to hold it just like this, but out of frame, and you'll get a really great little reflection of light. Can you see how that's working? Give that one a go at home. You can use it underneath. You can use it to reflect light any way you like. It's a really, really good way to get rid of shadows in a picture. Another really fun way of doing portraits is to use something to filter the light. So what I mean by that is just something that you're gonna hold between your portrait and the light source. I find this really works well when we've got that awful harsh sunlight I was talking about. So the way it creates harsh shadows just in a portrait, if you hold something up in between, you're gonna create those cool shadows, but 
we're doing it with intent uh, creatively it's not just random harsh shadows that you know sort of disrupt the picture or take the focus away from where we want it to be we're gonna manipulate the light so that we're taking pictures in a fun cool way so I like to use anything that is sort of lacy or like kimonos I've got or anything with crochet so if you've got any of your fun summer tops that have all those pretty details on them you could use those hold them up if you've got tablecloths that are like that anything around the house you just have a look and you can hold it between yourself and the sun or you could get your subject if you're you know working with a friend or family member and hold that usually just to one side but if you can get something that wraps around that would be even cooler and then just play around with where the sun hits and you'll get lovely patterns over the face and it looks really beautiful you can also use this technique if you've got blinds in your house to get stripes of light and I think they look really great if you've not got blinds you can hold anything in front of the sun and you'll get you know the the shapes so I've seen it done with sieves or colanders from the kitchen anything you find that's got any shape to it you hold it in front of the sun and you'll get that reflection on the face and it looks really cool it's a really creative portrait and it draws people's attention in it's something a little bit different you know so another portrait technique that I like to use is for long shots and it involves the way that we frame our subject so you're gonna grab a book any book it could be a notebook or a storybook whichever you've got to hand and you're gonna open it fairly centrally I would say have a little more weight on one side and fold one of the pages over like this and the weight of the other pages should hold that still for you and we're going to use this loop that we've created in the middle here to frame our subject so you grab your phone and you pop the lens in front of that loop and you want your subject to be far enough away from you that they're completely framed by that subject uh, by that subject by the uh, the fold of the book so it might take a few different tries and angles to get them completely right but if you get them sort of to the side you could get them fun silhouetted maybe backlit I'll pop up some examples of the way I've used it and the other images that I found online if you've got uh, words in the book it looks really cool to see the writing fall into the side you could just use the page and have a nice close-up of the loop but if you take it ever so slightly farther back I think it looks really nice when you can see that it's a book and that they're framed maybe someone reading a book within the book a little bit of inception going on there but it's a really cool way to frame your image to be a bit creative to get different elements into your photograph and I think it looks really cool so you can have a page wrapped around the camera lens and hold it up in front of your phone but it's a bit sad to tear a page out of a book Maybe if you've got a very old book that's broken. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed all of those portrait techniques, the technical ones and the cool fun hacks that we can use. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next week. Stay safe.